how to buy your first rental property to build wealth. In this video, I'm going to share with you exactly how you can start from zero with having no properties at all. In fact, I started from my parents' basement, bankrupt and in foreclosure, and I grew a rental portfolio over six figures in just a couple of years. And you can do the exact same thing too. I'm gonna share with you all of the details. Let's go. Noel. Yeah, she can fix that. If you gotta get it done, no, you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back, trying to get a big step. She can fix that. Let's fix that. I'm gonna share with you exactly how to find the best property, spending almost little to no money, and actually helping people in the process. I'm gonna share with you my exact formula for finding rental properties that most people don't even know anything about and how to get them for yourself with little to no competition. And last but not least, I'm gonna share with you exactly how to fix and flip properties so that you can make even more money on them when you go to sell them so you can actually build wealth. So finding the best properties that really don't have any competition with the sellers is really all about targeting people that are in a situation, okay? Most likely a financially distressful situation is going to be ideal for you. So like I said, where I started making a ton of money in real estate investing is when I started targeting people that were behind on their mortgage payments, okay? People that were about to go into foreclosure. I had already been through foreclosure, so I knew how awful it was. So I started targeting people before they actually went into foreclosure, bought lists of people that were behind on their payments two, three, four months and called them immediately and started telling them what we could do and how we could help them. You know, not just how I was going to make money on their property or, you know, their, their house was worth this and, you know, I could repair it and make this money. None of those type of conversations. I just simply focused on how terrible foreclosure was, you know, what that process was like, how it had ruined my credit, how it kind of ruined my life. And I was offering them a solution to avoid that situation by letting me, an investor, come and take that property over and relieve them of that situation so they don't have foreclosures. One of the cool things that, that about what we've been doing and how, how we've grown is how things you've done to get us in a better situation, the people that we've come along that we've helped, as I've seen, we've seen those people grow and do better and attain the things that we, we've got that yeah. They didn't even know that we could do it. Right. People just did not know. Well, it was so funny. I swear, when I learned about helping people that were in foreclosure, I was like, wait, where was people like me when we were going through this? We could have saved ourselves so much struggle if a real estate investor was out there to help us. So that was almost the best part of it. We had the checks were great and making money is great. But like the people that we help, like seriously, is is heartfelt and warming the cards we get the letters is cool. awesome one of the ways that I like to make money in real estate investing is through short-term rentals Airbnbs in fact I'm in an Airbnb right now in Park City Utah and I'm gonna go through this place and I'm just gonna show you some tips and things so that you can know how to maximize and make the most profits from your short-term rentals so you'll notice that we are in the living room of this Airbnb and this property sleeps 10 people. It's a four bedroom, three and a half bath. You'll see some video and I'll show you all through it. But in the living room, seating is very important. You'll notice that we have some couches here and that it's very important to have both a love seat and a couch and a sofa. If there's only one sofa and you only have one shared living area, you might wanna make this sleeper sofa instead of just a sofa that sits normal people. But this one is beautiful. I love the material. It's a faux leather and that's very durable. I usually recommend sofas and couches like this that have the faux leather because it is so durable. It's easy to clean. It's easy to maintain. And most people don't damage them very easily. It's very durable, high quality. And the great thing with sofas and seating, you want to make sure, of course, that you have enough seating for the number of people that the home sleeps. So like I said, this home sleeps 10. You want to have adequate seating for everyone. There's some extra chairs here. They're beautiful. You'll see they're also faux leather, but it's a great decor and it all kind of goes together. Very simple. And this property is themed for the mountains and the ski area. And it's very important that when you're doing Airbnb, you can maximize your profits by theming the property for the area that is it is in. 
Another important thing that you want to do with your short-term rentals, if you want to furnish and do the Airbnb thing and have short-term rentals, it is very important that the televisions usually are mounted to a wall. This is for safety. This is usually so that children, this TV couldn't fall on them. Nothing could really happen to it. And it also helps with theft. Okay. So one of the things that are usually stolen from Airbnb properties, short-term rentals, are the televisions because nowadays they're very inexpensive, but they're a lot lighter and easier to carry. And of course, people came with their cars. And so they really could, if they wanted, steal the TVs. And that was one of the more riskier items. So mounting it on the wall both protects you because it is obviously safer this way. It can't fall over on a child and it will deter theft. Okay, so let me take you through the rest of this beautiful home so you can see everything. You know, sometimes in my properties, what we'll do here is we do put place settings. It looks really nice and people know exactly what this space is for. It takes beautiful pictures because one of the things with all of your rental properties, whether it be long term or short term rental, pictures matter. You know, people find the properties online and on different websites. So your videos and your pictures really matter. So making sure that your property is themed pro appropriately, making sure it's painted, making sure that there's little decorative items. That's so important. Not just the necessities. Of course, you need the necessities like forks and knives and all of the appliances and things of that nature. But then there's decor stuff that's really important that makes your listing stand out. Things like, you know, dishcloths that match and, you know, clean, nice ones. Ones. And again, clean um, appliances that smell nice and that, you know, um, are not just functional, but they also look nice and they match. You know, I think sometimes people have short term rentals or vacation properties and they use it as a dumping ground for their old stuff. Let's not do that. Buy new and nice stuff for your vacation rental and treat it like a business and then it will be a business. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that you don't have food and things like that inside of here. This is probably um, someone that does have things in here, but there really shouldn't be anything inside of the pantry. Even if this is your home, obviously, you should box these things up and leave. You just do not want. What if someone just started sticking their hands and fingers inside of that stuff and then left? You know, you just don't want to do that. So um, obviously, fire extinguisher is super important. You want to have all of the safety measures. Um, absolutely love some of these type of things, of course, like smart thermostats that helps you because I'm sure the homeowner has an app and they can see exactly what the temperature is that we're going up and down. And then of course, notes and signs that let people know what it is that they're supposed to do, making sure they're clear and nice. So it's super important. And out here we have the patio. So of course I love nice having a nice space. I love that this one has a nice thick door and a screen. So even if you wanted to leave the door open, bugs wouldn't get inside, but just a nice area where people can sit and just comfortable seating. That is again, very durable, very easy to do, nice little view. So if you're on vacation or even if you wanted to work, you could just come right here and sit at this little table. It's absolutely beautiful. I do sky, very pretty. I'll show you that a nice grill and how beautiful. What a great amenity a nice grill is. And people love to cook out. If you want to have a property, you should definitely have a barbecue grill of some sort or let them have access to one because people do enjoy cooking out and barbecuing. And this is a very, very nice grill. All right, now we're going up the stairs. So in this area here, oh my gosh, they have this open little space with a nice little desk. And this is so important because on your short term rentals, you actually can advertise this property as being for work if you have a workspace, if you have a printer, and that's really it in Wi Fi. That's it. So they went a few, you know, a little further and they have some paper there and they have, you know, a nice little lamp, a very comfortable work chair. And so I think this is a great little workspace and it's really adding value. Here is a bedroom that we have here. This is a queen size bed, very, very good furniture. I like how they really went with that same rustic feel, nice decor. Again, very theme type of things with the lamp and, you know, again, ski, you know, they really went all out these actually with these little pieces right here. It is very, very themed for Utah and the mountains and a ski resort. Getting a kid's bedroom here, maximizing space, getting extra beds, as many beds as possible in a property, but still making it look nice. They really did a good job because I don't think any kid could break these if even if they tried. <laughs> and then, of course, the nice little uh, characters with the matching um, bed sheets is always nice. This all room just gets all pulled together with all the decor and, you know, very clean and nice and it all matches very well. 
and seems very durable, but the furniture, sturdy. So just as a bonus tip, when we are talking about getting your first rental property and fixing and flipping for a profit, it is so important that the flooring that you get is quality, especially in a rental property. You need to get quality flooring, but you need to pay a good price. You do not want to overspend and you definitely don't want to get expensive carpet that is really not necessary for the home or the market that you are in. Again, quality is so important because tenants do have a tendency to do wear and tear on a carpet and you do not want to have to replace the carpet every single time a tenant leaves. You also don't wanna spend a million dollars getting the nicest carpet that you want and that you love for your home. That's just not how you're gonna make a profit. So again, you need to balance quality with your budget and that's the key. So let's talk about the transition from, you know, obviously I started off in real estate investing. I started off wholesaling, just kind of flipping contracts. Then we got into fixing and flipping kind of the correct way. Obviously we did it the wrong way and lost everything. But actually after I learned how to do it the right way, I was actually pretty good at it. And you got really, really sick of flipping really fast. Tell me why, because I still kind of like it. Man, you got some, like, <laughs> so the thing is, when we go to do an Airbnb or, or a house we're gonna flip, she has to get the perfect colors and she just like she has to do this big thing with it. So we we're at Home Depot and she's going through the, the colors of the paints. Yes. And we gotta get the right blue and yes. they all look blue to me. Right. Thank and I'm showing you God. the different swatches the and you're like blue, jack of blue, this blue, is this blue, man? <laughs> no, they're not. They're literally different. That's why they have different names. And then all you hear is as I try to drift off to some of but Rando, what do you think of this is blue? What do you think it is blue? Oh my god, it looks good. I'm gonna say this because he is like diminishing how important it is during your flips to put your own little touches on it. Now, no, this is not, you know, HGTV and all this crazy stuff that some of these people do. That's not real life. However, you do put your own touches and paint is important and the colors do have to blend. I will give her this. Like, I'm always amazed by this. We'll go to a property and she'll, she'll buy it and we'll just have white walls and she'll be, she does it herself. She goes and gets some tape and just putting it on the wall and she'll just do something like I like paint, to paint. Paint some lines or something. Like, that just looks <laughs> like, a, like a dumb line. And then she'll take the thing out. It'll be this crazy stripe and this crazy design. I'm like, wow, this room looks great. <laughs> right. I will get Right. Like, and it's so easy to do. And I'm going to tell you another thing. This is so funny because one of the things with flipping, people don't realize is, yes, that stuff is important. But really a true flip and how you actually make money on a flip is starting with a very terrible house. So I would target people that were in property problems, you know, having a dilapidated house or they couldn't pay for it or they just didn't care for it or they inherited a house. That would happen so much. We made the most money off of houses people inherited that they did not want. So I think that's a great way to flip and that is probably the most profitable way. But there is some horror stories that goes along with terrible houses. And I think and, she uses me as the gauge of, of those houses. Like if I go in there and be like, oh, no, oh, my God. Let's get this one. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, as he goes in, I go Right, because you're always like, Every, this is awful. This you always is think awful. that it's awful. Why and I'm like, no, this is a gold mine. It's, it's always, beep, 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 on the door. All right, man, I'm going there and look. Right, you got to go in first. You always don't want to go in first. I don't I'm know why. I'm going there and I see all this carpet torp and it's like, what are you going to do with this? I'll take it. <laughs> what are you doing? Then I come back and it looks great. Right. But I guess she uses me as the gauge. Of, this is, why are we doing this? Yes. So the last house, and it's so funny. So now we, you, obviously we used to do a lot of flipping and what he got really sick of flipping. And I, I, I think it was probably the cat house. Was it the cat house that? The cat house. The cat was, house. The cat house still gives me nightmares. <laughs> it's going there. Let's so tell them about the cat house. So again, it's going to die and I'm expecting not to see. The outside of it was not it was that bad. It was actually very nice. It was a triplex. So the outside of it is, you know, the paint and everything. I go inside, there are cat, there's a cat that's having kittens laying right there. And it's another cat laying there that is deceased. And like, it's a dead cat in here. Sometimes the houses are smelly. 
smelly. It's a dead <laughs> cat in there. What it are you talking smell about? bad, but you can get smells out of houses. And she's looking at the structure in the wall. I'm looking at there's a dead cat on the ground. What are we doing, man? You get the dead cats out. We're not going to sell the house that way. And it doesn't come. The dead cats don't come with the house. We knew that. I don't know. You got to have a, a, a strong stomach for, for investing. If you're going to flip houses... Because that was why we didn't have any money the first time. Because we tried to flip nice houses in nice neighborhoods that didn't need anything. And it was all BS. So the real money is in those terrible houses. And so now that we don't flip as much because you don't want to go in stinky houses anymore. Go no. oh, figure. Um, now we do a lot of Airbnb. And you still complain. I mean, we spend so much time shopping for stuff. Shopping. We have to do a lot of shopping for our Airbnbs. And I actually enjoy it, but let's talk about the shopping. We go. We don't just go and buy one couch. We, we're buying for five houses. Well, we're it's a lot more efficient that way, first of all. We're there all day. And she has to pick the right one and this one. What does this look? Does this go with this? Does this look like this? I'm like, yes. And the price matters. That's another thing, of course, that you think that price doesn't matter. And so sometimes we have to not just shop. You just Okay, shopping is not just buying things, first of all. Everyone knows that. Shopping is price checking and comparing and the quality and trying things out, right? Yes. 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 So it's shopping, not just buying. He just wants to buy. Let's like, get some just... stuff and go home. No. <laughs> no. Let's see if we can get it $100 cheaper. <laughs> That's the thing. You have the budget. This is That's profits. I, again, it's a business. Profits matter. So with all that being said, we do have a lot of fun still. And shopping for your Airbnbs is a great part of your business. You do spend a lot of your time shopping. But finding quality things for your Airbnbs really does affect your profitability. So we have some beautiful properties, obviously, and we don't spend a lot of money furnishing them. So I think this is an absolutely perfect way to spend our time because it does turn into profits. It does. I would agree. And I do get to spend time with you. So right. And it's fun. You know you love hanging out with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now that you have your whole plan on how to buy your first rental property and build personal wealth, I want to invite you to get a full training completely free. Just go to noellesfreetraining.com. That's noellesfreetraining.com. I've created an entire course. It was a little too long to put up here, but it's going to teach you my exact formula on how to build wealth in real estate, the exact formula without losing money. I want to make sure that you have all of the necessary resources, tools, and knowledge you need to be successful. This is Noelle to your success.